Hi YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In this video, I'm going to attempt, I say attempt, to salvage lifting veneer on a dresser. The dresser matches this gorgeous lady behind me. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, you know that I just shared a video, the one before this one, on how I refinish this piece from start to finish. So thank you to those that are returning to my channel. If you are new here, I teach everything under the umbrella when it comes to refinishing, restoring, upcycling, painting furniture, and I dabble in, I sprinkle in a little home DIY projects as well. My name is Bethany and I own this little company called Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration and I've been doing this for a little over 10 years. So. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're gonna to get to the other side of my workshop and we're gonna to attempt to salvage the top of this dresser. If I can't do that, then you're gonna watch me or how I remove veneer, because sometimes it's not salvageable. So enough of my yakking, let's start walking. Let's get to the other side. Okay guys, we are on the other side of my workshop. This is where all the magic happens, or at least I like to think it does. But first we gotta say hi to Tom. My good little good luck charm there. That's Tom. I found him in a dresser not too long ago. It was lining a dresser drawer and I thought, you know what, Magnum PI, you need some wall space and you need to be looking at me and I need to be looking at you. So, hello Tom. All right, you guys, this is the dresser behind me. She's a beaut. She's sturdy. She's got some good bones. The drawers are in fantastic condition. There's just some little chipping veneer on the side here and on the other side as well. It's the top that has me concerned. Uh, the veneer is definitely lifting here. What makes veneer lift? Veneer has a tendency over time, either the adhesive has gotten loose or it's old, it's just not sticking as well, or there's been moisture damage. It's usually moisture damage. Sometimes you can fix it by taking a syringe filled with wood glue, getting underneath there, squirting the glue in, and then clamping it or do what I do. I put heavy bricks on the top of it. Sometimes I can flatten it and you can salvage it. This one, I'll show you a close-up video of what I'm dealing with because you can't see it from here, but it's really lifting along the seams of the veneer. So I will attempt to flatten it. I don't, how about this? I'm a realist, it doesn't look promising. So if I can't do that, I'm gonna have to end up stripping the entire top of the veneer. What's underneath? Your guess is good as mine. So we will find out together how I'm gonna proceed with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna clean the top. It's super dusty. So I'm gonna get out my crud cutter. Love this stuff. I am a big, big proponent of prepping your pieces of furniture. I just never totally just dive in. I wanna clean it, yes, even before I sand this. Um, I'm going to clean it because it's just dusty and it's probably got crud and oils and who knows what else. So I'm going to use this product. You're going to see me in a time-lapse video, spray it down, and then I'm going to give you a close-up look of exactly what I'm dealing with here with this veneer. Okay, here is said top of said dresser. So you can see the veneer. I hope this comes across. Can you guys see the strips of veneer that they laid down? You can see the seams. So there's one here, that's a section. Here is a section. Here is a section and so on and so forth. So remember veneer is just a thin overlay. They glue it right there. Do you see how thin it is? They just glue it on top of the dresser. So what I'm noticing, I got some extreme bubbling here where it's lifting up. That's what gets me nervous. It's not on the seam and it's, it's really hard. So I don't know if I can flatten that. So there's my issue. That's my big trouble spot and it's pretty long. Same with this one here. This one's on the seam. I, I, this one might be a little more promising here. Um, when I run my hands across it, those are the most trouble spots right there. There's a good look at them. So I'm going to sand first. I want to see if I can get that to flatten at all with sanding and just kind of see what I'm dealing with. Other than that, well, I say other than that, it's in pretty decent condition. So I try my best when I can to salvage wood, to salvage veneer, 
and give it a second life. Sometimes it's beyond repair. Um, I'm noticing down here, we get some chips out. All this stuff is relatively easy for me to fill in and fix. This one, we got a big section on this drawer. Do you see that there? That one's going to be interesting. I think I can do it. I think I can, I think again. Again, you guys, go watch my other video, my last one that I just posted, because I do show some veneer repair on the sister dresser to this one. So let's get started. You're gonna see me sand the top on a time-lapse video. Okay, you guys, I wanted to stop my time-lapse video really quick. So from what I can see, my early assessment at this point, I think I can salvage her. I think, I think. Okay, so from what I'm noticing, when I run the sander over those areas that were bubbled, it's almost like the bubbles kind of popped under the pressure of the sander. So now it's it's got like a split um, that's more noticeable. But what's good about that is I can get that syringe under there fill it with glue those areas and flatten it and hopefully i can fix this veneer and we can keep this top because i would say the majority of the top is in decent condition the veneer it's just got some bad spots so i'm hoping i can fix them camouflage them and make it look like it never happened so i'm going to give you a close-up view of what i'm looking at right here that area that was really bubbled it now kind of just split okay here's that area so Almost looks like, looks like I have a little canyon going on. Okay, do you see it right there? So there, there we go. So now it's flatter, but now I have like this gap here. So I'm hoping I can get it glued down. We can fill that with some wood putty. And when I stain it and I can draw in some wood grain and we can make it look like this never had an issue. So I'm gonna to continue to sand. The next time you're gonna see me is this top's gonna to be completely sanded. Oh my gosh, my breaker just went. <laughs> you guys look, my whole, my whole basement just went dark. There's my ring light. There's my outside window. Oh my gosh. So I have an issue. <laughs> One of my breakers keeps tripping just spontaneously. And I looked it up and I got it figured out. I just, I have to replace a breaker this weekend. So a 15 amp one. So yeah, so it, it cuts this whole section of my workshop off. This is where I do all of my work. You can see I don't have anything overpowering over here. Oh my gosh, that's so funny that happened while I was recording. Okay. So I'm going to finish sanding because my, out, my outlets work. They're fine. It's just my lights. My lights have gone. So <laughs> day in the life of a small business owner. Okay, so the next time you see me, the top's going to be sanded. And then I'll take you step by step on how I'm going to repair this veneer. Okay, I have the entire top sanded. And what I did overnight is I placed some bricks on the areas that were most bubbled and I wanted to flatten them as much as I could overnight before I start gluing down this veneer. So you're going to see me in this next part. I'm going to do a close up. Um, you're just going to see um, I'm going to have a syringe. Looks like this. You can get these on Amazon. They're very cool. Uh, they're woodworking specifically for glue. And what I'm going to do is I just put my tight bond glue in here and you'll see me lift up the veneer. I'm going to get the needle part of the syringe in as far as I can without damaging the veneer further. Get that glue really in there and then securing it once again with bricks. And then we'll see how flat we can get this veneer to lay. So that's what you're going to see next. Okay, this is the area that I'm going to be repairing first. And it's just, it's very delicate. So you can see I'm lifting it just slightly here, getting that syringe, the needle part in there carefully. And then I'm just moving it just a little bit by little bit, squeezing just a little dollop of glue under there. And I just keep going along where it'll allow me to get that needle head in there. 
without ripping more of the veneer. So you can see, see the glues right there coming out. Okay, so I'm gonna go up further this way, do the same thing, just squirt a little bit of glue, reposition it. It's very tedious work. Takes a long time to repair a veneer. That's why a lot of people don't do it and a lot of people just paint over it. But I'm determined to learn just a little more of the craft of how to repair it. Okay, that looks pretty good. If I go on the other side here, yeah, there's a little bit on the adjacent side here. I'm gonna squirt some more over here. And then I'm gonna lay my bricks on top of it and let this dry and see how well I did with getting this little canyon fixed. I've got two more areas on the top here where the veneer has split, where I'm going to try and glue it and flatten it down. So I'm squeezing all the excess glue out there with my finger. And I think I got an ample amount in there. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a wet wipe. I love having wet wipes in the workshop. I am cleaning up the excess glue around that area as much as I can. All right. Brick is going on top. Okay guys, I am back after filling those areas on the top of this dresser with glue with the syringe, if you remember. And I laid bricks on them because again, I'm trying to get those areas as flat as possible. So my next step here, and I say that with a little hesit hesitancy in my voice because I'm trying to salvage this top. I'm not sure it's gonna be successful, but I have to try and this is how you learn. And my channel is all about learning and making mistakes and I'm letting you have a peek into how I work and how I learn. And I don't know everything and really nobody on YouTube does. Um, and you try these things and you hope you have some success. So I'm gonna take the bricks off and from what I can see, I've got a crater here, which I think will be successful. There's one in the middle here that I'm just a little nervous about because once I get it filled, getting it sanded down flat, I'm just a little nervous about it. Gonna be honest with you. So what I'm gonna try and do next is I'm gonna use quick wood. I love this stuff. It's a wood putty and epoxy together. You gotta wear gloves when working with this. So you open it up and you just slice off what you wanna use. You mix it with your hands until you have a consistency. Um, and then you put it on your project and it sets really fast. So you're going to see me do a close up video of what I'm actually filling in on the top. I'm sure you can't see from where I'm filming right now. So I'm going to get this out of the tube here. I say I'm going to get it out of the tube and we're going to cut off what I need to use and we're going to close this back up as soon as possible. So when I say mix it with a consistency in the middle there, Part of that's epoxy, part of that's wood wood putty. So we wanna mix that together completely. So I'm gonna to get to doing that and then we're gonna do a close-up shot exactly what I'm filling here so you can have an idea. Okay, I'm reading a little bit more off the label for you guys, this quick wood. The strength is 900 PSI. Uh, the set time is 15, 25 minutes. It cures in one hour and this cure color is light tan. That's what I'm going to be going for because you know I'm going to be staining this a a colonial maple color so I just use this I'm gonna pinch off a bit I'm gonna get it back in that tube because I do not want it drying out at all get that top back on so it looks like this it looks like chewing gum it's the best way I can describe it and I just mix it together like that and then we're gonna get it in where we need to place it and then you guys can see what I'm doing here we go. Okay, here's the first little crater I'm putting it in right here. Can you see that with my pinky? I'm gonna get it in there. This stuff kind of stinks, I'm gonna be honest. Woo! It's got a little bit of a potent smell to it. It's not that pleasant. I like the smell of Bondo better, I'll tell you that much. All right, 
she's going in there just fine. Yeah, it's a bit of a split there. So I'm finding this veneer once it, you know, split open. It's like it's so dry. Again, I'm going to sand over that. It looks awful. Then I got a big section right here where it's split. I'm trying to push it, get it really in there. And I guess my decision will be made once I see how this sands flat or not. And we'll just take it from there. Because sometimes it's just what you got to do. You got to try something, see if it works. And if it doesn't, hopefully you learn something from it. Each furniture project I work on, I usually get something out of it. Sometimes a headache, sometimes a nice paycheck, but something. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this, you guys, and then I'll show you the final look of my Picasso masterpiece here I'm working on. Okay, you guys, let's get sanding those areas that I applied the quick wood to. So I'm going to be using my Festool stand sander. I love this one. This is the RTS 400. It's a rectangular one. Phenomenal sander. Love this thing. I have it hooked up to my dust extractor. Let's get her fired up. <laughs> Okay, it's not bad. Okay, so this wood on the top already has this a lot of variation in the grain and some of these lighter spots, which I think once I get this stained, I can camouflage these areas. So look how flat those bubbles got. It is completely flat now when I run my hands over it and I filled those gaps in with the quick wood. And there was a little area there. And then I went around, there was another little area there that I filled in. So, okay, now I'm going to give this one light sanding. Oh, this was 150 grit that I was just using on the top here. I still have to be very, very careful. This is thin veneer. I'm probably gonna take 180 grit now to the entire top here, give it one final sanding before I do wood conditioner and stain it. Okay, everyone, I'm at the tail end of fixing this veneer on top of this antique dresser. This has been a drawn out project because it takes a while to fix veneer. And I've also been doing a couple other projects in between this one. So I was able to save the top. I got the veneer flat. We put that epoxy, um, that resin wood putty on the top. But you'll see when I do a close up of the top, the putty did not take the stain as much as I would like it to. So I have been dabbling with some new products. I'm really trying to up my game here with woodworking. So I am using a product line by Mohawk. If you're not familiar with them, go Google them. And everything that I'm listing throughout this video, I will post links beneath the video description. So if you're interested in dabbling in this yourself, you can go order some. All this stuff can be found online through Amazon. So 
The first thing um, that I'm going to mention is some of these products are a little toxic, uh, especially this one here. This one's by Mohawk. This is their two minute touch up brushing liquid. So this, you have about like a two minute open time frame to work this. What do you use this with? You use this with their Mohawk powder stains. They have powder stains in a wide range of colors. The colors come in the kit. They have from white to black, a couple yellow shades, a red shade, and a ton of brown shades, everyone under the sun. So I bought, I, I believe this is like an intermediate kit. There are one, two, three, four, eight, there's 12 in this kit. And I have the lids open. These are the colors that they have. What you do is you dip a fine tip brush in that brushing liquid. Now remember, there's like a two minute open period here that you can work this. You dip it into the powder, swirl it around on a glass plate, on in a glass jar, and then you transfer that onto the wood putty and you try your best to make it blend in and make it look like that oopsie never happened. Now, did I do a little bit of it last night? I did for the first time. So I am all new to this. I'm gonna tell you up front. I am learning as I go. There's not many videos out there that I've found on YouTube that talk about these blending um, stain powders. So I'm all self-taught here on my channel and I'm letting you in, I'm letting you into my world up. I'm a little frustrated with this because I like a good challenge, but I like to learn something fast and I wanna master it as quick as possible. So I'm a little hard on myself. So I have to let myself, I have to give myself a little slack here. This is new for me and I can tell uh, the more I practice this, I will get better at it. But right now, I'm not the best at it. I will tell you that up front. So in the putty, when the putty has dried, you have to go in and create some grain look to that putty. Cause right now that putty's flat, has no character to it. So that's when, um, an exacto knife is going to come into play here. I'm going to show you in real time. I'm going to do the top of this dresser. <laughs> and I, I say that with a chuckle because if this works, fabulous. I got it on film. And if it doesn't work, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to be a little bummed out. But um, we're going to give a go of it. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I already made a video this morning or last night. I don't know. I only got like three hours of sleep. So I'm trying to remember when I did it. Um, where I showed a close up of what I did on one of the drawers. This dresser has had a lot of missing veneer on it and I thought, okay, it's the great piece for me to practice on. I got the dresser for free and this is how I learn. This is how I've always learned in the last 10 years with woodworking and refinishing furniture is I gotta make a lot of mistakes before I learn. So remember that you too. I need to take my own advice, but you out there as well, don't beat yourself up too hard. It's a learning process and through our mistakes, that's how we learn and that's how we get skilled and that's how we master something. So I'm gonna quit chatting and you're gonna see me on the top of this dresser here. I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and you're gonna see me um, put in lines that will emulate a wood grain and then we can get to mixing and I can kind of find the right, sh the right shade here of what I wanna put on here. You can blend these powder stains but I'm finding, um, I'm not blending them as much right now. I'm kind of just like layering them. Maybe that's not right, the right way to go with this. So please, anybody out there that's watching this video, if you made it this far, please give me a comment, suggestions on how you work with these because I'm new to this. So let's get going. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go in here. Gotta take my glasses off. Yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> And I'm just going to start to put some little, little lines in. You don't want to do anything too repetitive, like an exact pattern. Remember, a grain is usually random. You get some little strokes in there with longer ones. And that's all I'm doing is I'm edging in some fake wood grain in this wood putty. Because once we put these blending stains on, you'll see how it takes into these lines that I'm making. Okay, what I'm first learning to do is kind of do a tester of blending two colors. So the two colors that 
work the best for these areas to try to match up with the rest of the veneer on the top of the stressor. Um, this color here has a nice light brown color to it. This is extra dark walnut. And if I add a hint, just a smidge, just a touch of the burnt sienna, you can see we do have some orange in here, some redness. And that's what I get when I mix those two together. It might be just a tad too dark. I'm not sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to brush in the light brown and see where that gets me. And then if I need to add a little of the burnt sienna, I'm going to go from there. So that's where I'm at. Um, always do a tester from what I like to always tell people never just go at something blindly, do a little prep work here. Um, and that's what I'm just trying to do here is just get a color match as best as I can. Okay, here we go. All right, so you dip it in the brushing liquid like that, use fine tip brushes, and you just get it right on the tip there. And then you dip it in the powder pigment. And then I like bring it back here, dab it off. See how opaque it is. I'm just gonna bring a little more over. I didn't get much on that dip. It really grabs to the brush as soon as you dip it. If you've been to a nail salon, you'll know what I mean when I say that. If you've ever had acrylic nails done, it's kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna come in here. Hoo, 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 hoo. Wish me luck, here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it in. Looking a little too dark, but not certain. I'm just gonna bring it all the way down. And then I might just take a feather brush. Because I don't like how it lays sometimes. That is not looking the best. So I'm gonna take a feather brush in here. I find that it gets glumpy in areas and I don't like that. This is like a gel. That liquid is like a gel and it can lay heavy in certain spots. And if I find, if I bring that brush in, you can just camouflage it a little bit better. getting there okay mistake from me see I'm learning these brushes even though they're considered fine they are not fine enough even this is too big of a tip you guys we want extra 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 fine look at the difference I'm having much success with a very very small tipped brush. So for example, I can get into this one better than I did this one. My borders got kind of all wonky on that one because I used the thicker brush. So definitely use a very, very, very thin brush. Okay, from afar, not too bad. <laughs> Close up, not so good. Uh, there's one that I'm really not liking. This one here looks awful. This one, not too bad. There's one that I do like that I did. Look at that. I'm looking for it. Oh, this one right here. This one's not bad. Not bad. Not bad for my first go round. This one's terrible. And this one's so-so. So... -so. so I don't know, you guys. I need more practice. Yeah, look from like right here. They're so noticeable. I need to get better at blending them in and camouflaging and working on my colors. Eek, you guys, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Okay, so I went over now with those areas with a graining pencil to soften it up a bit. And I used a kind of like a burnt 
red color. Oh my gosh, it helped soften up that one. My big one, I'm still working on that. And then that other one is right here. Okay, it's looking better. Not very streaky, look like it's blending. Okay, okay, I'm seeing some promise here. These graining pencils are also by Mohawk. I will put the link under the video description. I would say for sure you gotta get these. Okay, everyone, this concludes this long video on how I was able to salvage the veneer on top of that dresser. And I'm so glad that I was able to because it's the sister dresser to this taller one here and now they match. Now they both are stained, they look gorgeous. And I was able to modernize this pair of dressers, but also highlight that natural, beautiful veneer on both pieces. So I'm very happy. Uh, my repair looks pretty good. I'm gonna give it like an eight out of a 10, not too shabby for my first time using some of those Mohawk powdered stains. So like I said earlier in the video, I will list all the products that I used in this video. It'll be below the video description. And until I see you guys again, Little Biscuit and I, we are gonna say toodaloo here from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. And please, please like this video, share it. The more exposure I get online, better for me and my small business. And I truly do hope that I'm teaching others that are dabbling in refinishing furniture and finding some reprieve from the craziness of life. I find it therapeutic, so I hope other people do as well. So if you have any questions on the te techniques that I used or the products in this video, just drop me um, a comment in the comment section uh, below the video and I'm happy to help. So until we see you again, Biscuit goes, shut up, mom, you talk too much. I'm like, I know. Uh, we say toodaloo, right buddy?